Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to Kerrika TV. Today we have an awesome artist spotlight for you. We're going to be introducing you to Joya Deze, who has a blog called joylovesfashion.com. And in addition to this, she's also a fashion writer, a fashion stylist, and since I've done this interview, she went on to launch a new business with her now husband called Curl Sisters, which has a hairline and an accompanying blog called curlsisters.com. So stay tuned because you guys are about to meet Joya Deze. Thanks for sitting down with us. We're so excited to get into all this cuteness. <laughs> You're a Nigerian, correct? Yes. First generation Nigerian American. As you all know, I am Nigerian as well. Nigerian American. <laughs> um, Nigerian parents always want their children to study things that have a more, how would we say, uh, a more like real career, doctor, lawyers, engineer, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> what did your parents say when they decided that, when you decided that you wanted to be a fashion stylist? First of all, they had no idea what a fashion stylist was. They were like, fashion like do you get paid like what are what is this you know thing that you're doing and it wasn't until my mom came like she'll come and visit me in essence and she met like an editor-in-chief Constance at the time and then she started to see that I'm actually like this is a job like any other job it just happens to be more creative and it's actually harder than other jobs because you're literally always working and you're literally like kind of creating it as you go along so it took them a while like I had to really say guys I'm not gonna be a doctor like for a while they were like are you gonna go back to school <laughs> do you want to get your master's and I'm I had to just show them what I was working on show them my passion and it took them some time but they have come around and they you know think I'm doing great they are very supportive my mom is always telling her friends how uh my daughter is a stylist my daughter is a stylist <laughs> que rica. I imagine it probably started off as a hobby, um, like most things do for people that you know create careers for themselves. But when was it that you were like, oh my goodness, this could be a job. This is going to be my job. It's funny because I have two different stories for styling and blogging. For styling, I knew that instantly that, that this was a job that you would make, not just money, but a lot of money, depending on how much work you put into it and depending on how skilled you were, like how much you really like grind and you know get out there and do your work. Blogging was so new that when it came out, people were just doing it for, you know, leisure and for fun it wasn't seen as something that was going to make a lot of money which now it is so with that I started it to inspire people and to really kind of show off my style and it just became very addicting mm. um, and yeah it turned four last year and it's just been a really amazing ride um, getting all kinds of opportunities like I've worked with really great companies in the past like eBay, um, Weedod, Hair, it's been really like fast paced and very, it's just, it's great, yeah. Que rica. Who would you consider to be your biggest style icon? When you first started out, did you try to, um, not to say mimic someone's style, but were you s inspired uh, style-wise by someone in particular? I think my mother, more than anything, she influenced me that, like directly because I was wearing her clothes that she wore in the 70s and 80s, that she had given me since I was in high school, like she would start giving me like bags of clothing that was in the attic and she would say, here, this is for you. And there'll be bags of like really amazing stuff. So I think early on I was uh, very influenced by just, especially my culture, like we, we love to wear prints, we love to wear color. It's just a part of our DNA. So that was very um, influential. But I think my mom was the first person that kind of like was very like my style cheerleader and uh, like I was like her muse. People that have inspired me as I've gone on, um, like my mentor Constance White, who is great because like she's actually one of my clients now. Like I style her now, so it's just been like this full circle thing. Que rica. Would you say that your culture heavily influences your sense of style, or is it just an element of your sense of style? It's definitely just an element. I had the opportunity to go and live in Nigeria when I was 16 for a year. Growing up in Houston and New Jersey and I wanted to see like my culture like firsthand. I'd always heard stories about like my uncles and aunts and but I never saw Nigeria so I thought that that would be the perfect time when I was still young and I could just kind of go for a year and then like you know, come back. And it was the best year because it taught me so much. So. To answer that question, I would say that it has elements because of I I have grown up in America, so I take a little bit of the American style and mix it with a little bit of the color that I've been, you know, born with and influenced with. Que rica. 
How was it that you were able to secure the internship at Women's Wear Daily? Because I am sure that I know I you guys want to know, right? I love this story because this is a really, that's a really good story. I was looking for an internship and I had been applying and then I heard that Women's Wear Daily was looking for interns and I was like, oh my God, like that's the top of like, that's the fashion Bible. Like they have everything. They have amazing des um, editors and so uh, someone that I had met like two years ago gave me the, she sent me an email and she was like, hey, they're looking for an intern, you know, apply. So I applied immediately and got a response like in 15 minutes. And they said, hey, can you come today? I said, yes, I can come today. I hopped in the bus. I was living in New York. No, not New York. I was living in New Jersey. Hopped in a bus to New York and I met with the editor. They were about to go into Fashion Week the next week. So they were looking for people like ASAP. And I went there, showed her you know, like the best of me, you know, I, I uh, wowed her with my <laughs> interview skills and just kind of was very professional about what I wanted from the internship and what I was going to give them from interning. And she hired me on the spot and said, can you come back on Monday? And it was a Friday. And from there came Constance White, then came Essence. And the rest is And the rest is, yeah. <laughs> que rica. What have been some of your biggest struggles um, establishing your brand as uh, and um, just growing Joy Loves Fashion. Fashion is such a, it's such a like, kind of like an avant-garde career like, where there's no set rules of how to get to where you have to be. Even though fashion blogging, fashion writing, and fashion styling like may seem like they go together, they do sometimes, but there's different aspects to both and different needs and different deadlines. And So I think my biggest, um, biggest what you say struggle or biggest struggle I have to say just con consistently balance everything I love to make to-do lists I love <laughs> to plan things out I love um, like creating like my plan for the day or like my plan for the week and with that I'll put my deadlines in that I have from like my writing jobs I write for hellobeautiful.com Huffington Post um, New York Magazine so I put those deadlines in like the you know different projects that I have for that. I put in my styling um, projects for my individual clients or some that I'm doing for companies. I just did a cover girl shoot, so I had to like, you know, plan for that. It's, it's definitely a lot of juggling, but then you find it a way to make it work. If you really want to make everything work, you find a way. And with the blog, I put my posts, you know, schedule those in for the week. So then I wake up and just kind of hit everything and start and it happens. Que <laughs> rica. <laughs> what are some words of advice that you would give to anyone who wants to become um, a stylist, a blogger, or just wants to be involved in the fashion industry? Networking. I mean, I can't tell you people that I've met that have been able to help me get to the next level, especially early on when I was interning and assisting, meeting people when I was you know, going to Fashion Week, interning for WWD, meeting people just on the street in New York or just in a random cafe, um, Starbucks. You never know who you're gonna meet, especially when you're in New York. So take advantage of people that you come across, keep in touch with them. That's the big thing. Like pe people collect like business cards, but they don't keep in touch. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to keep in touch with everyone, but the ones that are the most important, make sure you send them an email, um, say it was great to meet them and letting them know your goals. Early on, I think, the reason why Constance was, you know, she doesn't just work with anyone, which was very, um, it was a huge honor for her to choose me. And, you know, we, because um, I, I told her my goals early on. I said, I want to be the best stylist I can be. I want to really inspire and work really hard and to create amazing work. So she knew that off the bat. So she saw what I wanted to do and she knew that she can help me to get to where I wanted to be. So people should really tell people that they admire their goals, um, where they see themselves in a year, where they see themselves in five years, because that helps to put to give them that help that they need from whoever they're asking it of. Another big thing is interning. It's really important to intern for whoever you admire. Send them an email. Really pour your soul and show them how much you'd love to work for them. If they are looking for someone and you happen to be the one that, that emails at that moment, they will at least consider something, either if it's just emailing you back, calling you, inviting you for an interview, the ultimate you know, goal. <laughs> so interning is the third thing that's really um, of utmost importance. And just keeping your dreams and your goals alive. It's very easy to get uh, distracted 
you know, uh, discouraged, um, down, <laughs> three Ds, <laughs> because you're working in an industry that's very competitive, especially with blogging. If you do get down, because you will, I, I have, I do, it happens, like we're human beings and we're working in a crazy industry that's always on the move, write down your goals and just keep them close. <clears throat> Keep them close to you and just make sure that you remember why you're doing it in, in the first place. Because you're going to have those days where you're like, I'm tired. <laughs> why am I doing this? Que rica. What is your overall goal as Joya Deze and for Joy Loves Fashion? Uh, my overall goal with Joy Loves Fashion is to continue the, the blog, which I love to do. And it just turned four. I can see it turning 10 and turning 15. And I want to write a book about fashion and personal style, which has been on my mind for actually two years. Um, one more thing is, of course, you know, always growing my clientele. I have several clients I work with, and I do a lot of image consulting with them, where I'll help them with their everyday style. I'll, I'll do personal shopping and bring it to them, which is like, people love that. Like, it's like having a mall in your living room. Que right? rica. <laughs> it's been a pleasure sitting here and speaking with you today in all of your fabulous ways. I feel like it's, some of it has like washed off on me. It's off on you. It is so rough. Off. <laughs> and guys, thank you for tuning in to Kerrika TV. Until the next time, stay fly and live rich. So glad you guys got to meet Joy. Isn't she awesome? I love her. She's so sweet, so smart, very fashionable. That's the reason why we're friends. Check out all of her awesome happenings on joylovesfashion.com as well as curlsisters.com. And don't forget to check back here next Sunday. We have a chatty Sunday topic. And then a week after that, we are going to be introducing you to another artist named Errol Leonard. He's an awesome New York-based photographer, and um, he has a lot of good things popping off. So until later, guys, subscribe to Kid Week at TV, and we will see you next week. Live rich and happy dream chasing. I hated being dark skin. Like, I did not like my complexion. I get, used to get teased horribly. Um, I was called African booty scratcher because I'm Nigerian. Um, I was called things like black street, like all types of things that made me super self-conscious about the skin I was in. Hey, money, your money, money, money. You can take off your clothes long as you're coming home. Girl, I don't mind. That's a lie. I should straight up done lie to the kids.